What's up everyone? So I'm making this video about my my van and how I'm able to drive. Um, I'm a C4, C5 complete quadriplegic. Um, hopefully you find this video helpful. And if you do, you know what to do, leave a like and it's up to you, subscribe. I post videos about my RC hobbies and 3D printing. All right, have a good one guys. So I'm just making this video to share with you guys how I drive my van. Um, I just managed to get my driver's license yesterday. It was a very simple process. I overthought it too much and how it was gonna go. Uh, I just simply went up to the place. Um, they allowed me to go right in front of everyone in line. And they were so helpful with everything. They helped me take out my paperwork, everything that was needed to get my driver's license. I had the vision exam, the written exam, and the road test. They were all very simple. I thought about it too much and overcomplicated things in my head more than I needed to. So let's get started on how I drive. Here, I have my key. I carry it around my neck. And in order to open the door, I just press the button with my mouth. And there's the door opening. This is a 2013 Dodge Grand Caravan, a brown ability conversion. Automatic doors. So I just wheel right in. Here, I 3D print these mounts in order to hang my my quad tools gripper right here that way whenever I need it I could just reach back behind the seat and get it might be in a drive-through when I when I use it most here in the back I have my other quad tool so here in my van I have two steering two control hand controls the left one controls the accelerator and braking and the right one is my steering and there on the right of the steering is the screen where I control um, my windows. Uh, I start the engine. I also change the gears, either reverse, drive, neutral. Um, I could also control my mirrors from there. I'll show you guys in a moment. And here down below um, is my wheelchair lock. Um, underneath my wheelchair, which is an M3, I, ins I had a... a um, a bracket installed to be compatible with this lock. So when I get in, I just position myself. I make sure to lower my feet just enough to pass the, the seat belt, as you can see right there. All right. So now from here, I put my hand underneath the seat belt and lift it up. And then I guide it with my other hand so I won't get stuck in my wheelchair. I just ride straight through. I grab my phone, hold it with my mouth. All right, so now I grab my phone from my mouth and I place it here, right next to the door on this opening. And there it is. Now I have this cable. Hopefully you guys could see it. I have this cable hanging right here in my steering wheel. This is my phone cable. It's magnetic, which makes it a whole lot easier for me. I just simply have to put it right on top. And there it goes. It's connected. I just move it to the side so it won't interfere with my, with my left hand control. There we go. Now I just position myself correctly. Um, 
how I'm most comfortable. I already locked in, in the bottom, um, wheelchair lock. So now I take off my keys from around my neck. out of the way oh here I have my mask hanging when I need it I just grab it from there since I don't use th this lever it's optimal position all right so now I'm trying I'm putting the keys well the key loop in my finger so I could grab onto it like this and then I just aim towards the keyhole on the car. And I push it in. And there it goes. I make sure it's completely in. I've had occasions when it wasn't completely in and I was driving and all of a sudden it stopped reading because it popped out a little bit and the car simply stalled out and I had to move over to the side. All right, so this system is called an Avid system. It is a fly-by-wire system. It's all electronic, although there's nothing completely integrated into a vehicle. It's just placed on top, per se. I'm not sure if you guys could see the bottom. There's a, there's a bracket attached to the brake pedal where it pushes the brake inward as if it were emulating a foot pressing in, which makes it very convenient knowing that it's not fully integrated electronically into a vehicle. This way I could take it to a regular mechanic and they could troubleshoot it without worrying about messing something up electronically. And here in my wheelchair, I had to take my joystick off because I sometimes hit when I'm steering. I put my joystick here. It fell. I'll just get it later. That's why I carry my long quad tool reacher in my van. All right, to start the vehicle with the Avid system, I have to press this button instead of twisting the key. I select the sept, press the green start, then press the start button. Here I have parking, reverse, drive. Um, I have my emergency brakes, my headlights, my wipers, my door locks, my windows, cruise control, which I can also activate from here. And if I click the aux button, I'm able to, oh, sorry about that. There we go. Um, here I could control my adjust adjustments for my side mirrors. So in order to get the Avid system completely started, it has to go through a calibration process every time you start it. Here's asking me to steer to the left in order to align the both the the steering wheel and the hand control steering. So I'm, I'm going to steer it to the left. There it is. It found the it found the center, and now it's just calibrating. And then it's going to ask me to briefly test out the controls: accelerator, brake, and steering left and right. There you go. It's asking me to test out the gas and brake, so I'm gonna tap it, accelerate, and tap it brake. Now it's asking me to steer, so I'm gonna steer left just a little then steer right just a little and there it is it's fully started so i'm gonna open my windows because it's, it's pretty hot right now probably high 70s low 80s right now oh yep there it is 80 degrees so i'm gonna go ahead and close my my ramp it's closing right there i currently have the kneeling system turned off in the van because I don't really need it 
and I'm scared that when I park next to a sidewalk, it, the sidewalk might be pretty high and the van's gonna sit right on top of it and hit the side panels. So here you can see that I could reach my, my quad tool reacher when I need it. Oh, I don't know if you could see, but here I, I just swing my arm back behind the passenger seat and I could grab onto it. All right, so the cable that you saw me plug in into my phone is a cable that leads right into the stereo. And the stereo turned into the Android Auto since I have an Android phone. And I could control with my voice, um, everything from here, either the maps, the music, or make calls or text all through the stereo. Um, while, while I'm driving, I don't have to touch it. It's all voice command. Yep. It's very convenient. What else? Oh yes. So here on the left, I just put my hand in. Yes, I have to tap it down. Um, when I twist my hand towards the left on um, this joystick that I'm grabbing, that activates different functions depending on how long I hold it. And you can hear the beeps. Hopefully you can hear the beeps. So for example, I'm gonna activate the right blinker. I'm gonna hold it for two beeps, two beeps, and it will show me on the screen. So here it goes, one, two. I'm not sure if you guys could see it here on the screen. It's letting me know that I activated the right blinker. I turned it off. So now I'm gonna activate the left blinker. That's only one beep. There it goes. And it activated the left blinker. All right. So like I mentioned before, the left one is gas forward, back brake, and here, and I have the steering, left is left, right is right, it's fully proportional. There's different modes that could be adjusted depending on the user and how he feels, he or she feels more comfortable. Um, am I missing something? I don't think I am. Um, all right, let's go driving. So I'm gonna hold back the brake, press drive, drive is here in the lower left of the screen I just hold it instead of having to move these this lever I'm still recording awesome here we go coming to a stop waiting for vehicles to pass the wind isn't making too much background noise. So here on this um, left hand control, just as I activated my left and right blinkers, I could also activate my wipers, my cruise control, my high beams. Um, I believe there was another function, but I don't really use it. And it's all activated depending on how long um, that handle is twisted, twisted to the left. To the left. Hopefully this video is helpful to anyone out there. I don't know if I mentioned it, I'm a C4, C5 complete quadriplegic. I have very low hand function. I have um, 
bicep function but no triceps some shoulder function on both hands my tenodesis is a lot better on my right hand than in my left which allows me to grasp the steering a lot better I added some bicycle grips here on the on the con on the hand controls to make them wider and have better grip. So now we're driving. We're heading towards the lake. It's just a short drive away from my house. There's a marina. here to go back home all right and yes every time I turn I activate my blinker just as shown some time ago I'm gonna turn left here I'm gonna go ahead and pull my window up. Oh. As you can see, I'm getting a call right there. I'll just decline since I'm out of stop. All right, I'm gonna pull my window up through this screen. There you go. I'll leave my passenger window open to get a little breeze going. Left blinker activated, no cars. Now I'm just heading back. I'm gonna pause the video and resume once I'm going to get out my van. All right, never mind. I'm gonna resume and keep talking about my experience driving. When I first started driving, probably three months ago, two and a half months ago, I was extremely nervous because the last time I drove a vehicle was when I was 17. And I am now about to turn 27 on August of 2021. And I was extremely nervous. I was just uh, driving in parking lots, getting acquainted with the system and acquainted with myself actually, just knowing my response and how I would react to and to a, a vehicle stopping suddenly in front of me, just simulating those scenarios in my head and then simulating them in a parking lot. And then afterwards, just as I went on driving every so often for practice, I got confidence. I got I got acquainted with the system and how it works and how it handles. Then afterwards, I started thinking to myself, I think I'm ready to get my license. And then I overthought it and thinking I was gonna need a whole bunch of things, reading on on the Facebook group that I might have to go to a rehabilitation where they specialize in getting you ready for a vehicle. And I thought I was gonna have to go through that and pay $1,000 or over $1,000 in, here in Illinois, specifically in Chicago. But thankfully, I went to the DMV, got my license, it was very simple only 28 questions they were all common sense questions and the most common signs that you will see on the road and I took the vision test and the driving test the people there were very kind they helped me with everything that I needed from getting my paperwork out of the envelope and my bag It was all a very convenient process. I, I overcomplicated things in my head. So if you guys are wanting to get out there and driving, 
and thinking that it's going to be too much just go ahead and give it a try you might be overthinking it too hopefully you are i hope nobody gives you a hard process all right i'm gonna resume once i go parking gopro stop recording so i'm back home i'm about to park This vehicle comes equipped with a rear view camera, which is also extremely convenient. Being in a wheelchair, wheelchair, you can't really turn and look behind you. So I just use my side mirrors, my rear view mirror, and the rear camera. And here, I just look at my stereo. Back up slowly. And there we go put the vehicle in parking turn off the right blinker and we're home so now I just put my windows up there goes driver there goes passenger make sure no one is walking on the sidewalk when I open up my ramp I press the button I can also open my all the doors through up here and also my ramp. So now to turn off the vehicle, I hold the stop button. It turned off the engine. And now to turn off the AVID system, I press and hold the triangle twice. That's the first time. And that's the second time. It fully shut off. So now, I pull the cable just a bit. Oh. Yep. Pull it up just a bit in order for it to make it easier for me to grab the phone off the side of the door. There we go. I got it here. No. No. Okay. That was my grandma. So here I have my phone and I in my chair. I just pull the magnetic cable off my phone. Extremely convenient guys. Get one if you don't have one. And here on the cable, I the cable I rest it on my right hand control. That way when I'm when I get back in the vehicle. I just lift it up from there. So now to disengage my wheelchair from the locking mechanism on the floor. There's this button here. Hopefully you guys could see it. It's touch sensitive. So I just touch it. And there we go. I tilt my chair up just a bit so I won't scrape on the locking mechanism installed on the floor. There you go. Oh, almost forgot my keys, guys. Almost forgot my keys. I put my hand in through the loop of the lanyard and I just give it a quick little pull. And there we go. And now I just put it over my head. Hopefully I can get it the first time with this camera on the hat. That's the camera. And there's me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna back up. push the seatbelt off my thighs put my phone on my lap come off the vehicle I turn around grab the key and I grab it and press the press the button with my mouth to close the door. And there it goes. So if you guys have any questions regarding my system setup or any advice you, you might need that I might be able to help, leave a comment below and I'll try to help you guys out or provide more information on 
on my vehicle something that I missed. All right, guys and girls, have a good one. And I'll see you guys next time. GoPro, stop recording. <laughs>